I know you have an exciting project you've started, and I want you to tell everybody about it. Yes, it's called Fun, Flirty, and Fabulous, 21 Days to Unleashing Your Femininity. And it's for women um, who I call are audacious, they want to step it up, they're wanting to step more into their femininity and their life and their business, and by adding fun, flirty, and then what really makes a woman fabulous. So that's mm -hmm. what it's all about. It's just a three-week program, and we kind of dive into that. Um, those components that women are, I feel, really need to step into that we forget very uh -huh. often. Can you give me one tip to use, like that I can, one, can you give one away or no? Oh, of yeah. course, yeah. Or something you're not using, but it would be yeah. related. No, but it's just like really fun. So how can you make a daily activity a lot more fun? So one of my favorite ones, which a lot of the women are like, you've gotta be crazy, you're making me do that, so I'm gonna make you do this, okay? okay. So, if you're brushing your teeth, how could you make it a little more sensual and fun? Okay. I'm just brushing your teeth, going around, you doing day. How could you make it a little more fun? You could blow kisses to yourself in the mirror. Exactly! You could be you a little more fun. You wear could wear brown panties and yes. dance around <laughs> See? Or when you put lipstick on. See, you and I have story too. Or when you put lipstick on. It's just like putting it on. How could you do a little more sensually? Well, sometimes that could even add humor and fun to your day. That is why we call it fun for a new fabulous. Okay. At first, it's stop taking yourself so seriously. Yes. I love like, it. Have a little more fun. I mean, those are just, you know, the top things. We do go a little deeper than that, but it's just one of those things of like, how can we make our daily life, it's not about adding something that is impossible or living this fantasy, but we all have our daily routines. What can we do to add a little more fun, a little more flirt, and be a little more Yeah, fun well, I'm sure those women, if they have boyfriends or husbands or dating, <laughs> they're loving it. That they'll <laughs> say, can you brush your teeth again? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, see, that's the fun of it. Like, how easy is it for you to feel totally sexy? Well, anymore, not so hard. It used to be harder, I think, just yeah. do almost anything these days. Strut yourself, put on some heels. Actually, that's probably the quickest way I feel sexy, is if I'm like having a blow all day, uh -huh. I, I go and at least change, make sure I'm not in my pajamas, Yes. and I put on some heels and strut around. That helps, and turn music on. Okay, that I like quick. that. That's a good tip. Yeah, no, I found that too. Like, if I, if I do myself up where I feel sexy, yes. then it helps me feel sexier. Yeah. But I think I had to learn it too, like get ideas from people and like get feedback and realize that I am sexy because I used to think I wasn't sexy. So oh, you're full of sex appeal here. Oh thank you. Well so I think now I own it but <laughs> long ago I felt I don't know why. I just I just felt awkward and didn't know how to own it. So yeah, I learned you know, how I think actually a lot of women actually felt awkward and don't know how to own it. Can't say how many of my friends who are married now too, especially and they're like, uh yeah, role playing, I'm not doing that or this or that. You just kind of I think sometimes lose the spontaneity when you have this huge long to-do list mm -hmm. and we get in that rote day. Yes. We kind of just forget to be fun and spontaneous and playful, yes. which is actually what I, why I created the program, Fun, Flirty, and Fabulous, to kind of get back into that place and not take ourselves so seriously and totally. step on back. And well, I'm sure a fun. lot of moms could use it. Yeah. Can't we? All these days. Yeah. Especially uh. in the corporate world, you get so busy and you get wrapped up and time you're home at night, it's just like time to turn around and wake up and do it all over again. So yeah. I think it goes across the board for all women. We just need to add a little more fun and spice back into it just to well, like yeah. and, and it's, have fun. And it's having that intention, like realizing yeah. that, okay, I already know tonight I'm going to be really tired, but I'm going to set the intention that no matter what, I'm staying up until 10. And if yes. I need a cup of coffee to stay up, I'm going to still do something <laughs> fun. You know? No, it's true. And really, you know, you said a really good point is making the intention. I think mm -hmm. the more aware and the more that we set intentions to actually do it and not just let life pass us by and be like, oh, we'll do it later. I think that also, too, can keep us in that constant um, place of wanting and desiring and trying to keep our identity as we go a mile a minute in all different directions, as women so well do. Yes, yes, yeah. totally. And and I know you're a feminine leadership expert, and you have I You Can Do It Diva. Yes. And was that part of your inspiration for creating You Can Do It Diva? Like, what are some of the things you do with that company? Well, with You Can Do It Diva, I created it um, where women can come together in the sisterhood collaborations where I say your dreams, your support, and connection unite mm -hmm. to have a fabulous sisterhood because I feel like it's really important to create sacred and um, supportive environments where women get are able to have permission mm -hmm. to dream bigger, to have those kind of conversations, yeah. and talk about the expectations that are on us, as well as what can we do without those expectations that might be, um, how do we break the mold, I guess I should say, of oh, expectations, yeah. but in an environment where we can ask questions. 
Got it. for women that are a few steps ahead of us, who are behind us, and just having this kind of conversation, but in a supportive environment that it's nurturing and that actually propels us to move forward and doesn't tear us down and, you know, creating that dialogue sh shift that I'm talk we talked about before with the paradigm of women and supporting each other, then I feel like that's the essential of what I created you can do with you before. Got it. Wow, beautiful. That's really powerful. And what do you feel you offer women if they came to you and they have trouble feeling like they're inferior to women who are powerful leaders already. There are a lot of women out there that, oh, I don't know how to talk to these women and I feel a little bit in competition, like I'm not as good as them. What are some things that they can do to get over that? Yeah. I think one of the biggest, um, when women feel that way, is that their own insecurities and their own fears and their own belief systems that's limiting them. And that's so when we get in front of somebody that we feel intimidated by or that's that response that's coming up, it's kind of the mirror back to us of what we think we're lacking okay. and that we see in them. So it's really kind of owning that and kind of looking at what are we telling ourselves that is making ourselves feel belittled or why are we feeling less than. Kind of looking at that first and foremost and kind of just understanding the value systems that we have for ourselves and how we can create that and that when we are amongst other women, if we're having this low value system for ourselves, that it is going to put us in a place of competition with other women yes. instead of appreciating what our idea or what we see in them as their success. So it's kind of really like looking at ourselves too, not in a place of judgment, but in a place of learning and of growth and how to expand that and get deeper into ourselves so we can then go out and create what it is that we want to create. So that's why they need you because I know you can help them get clarity because even if you're very self-aware, mm -hmm. it really helps to have someone else point things out to us and we were talking about that too even as you know coaches, leaders, mentors and everything that yes. we do, it helps to have someone there that can be an accountability partner or a coach to really help us see who we really are. Absolutely and I think it's really important because you know we hire business coaches or we hire these kind of coaches. You know we only know what we know and so when we put that investment in ourselves to grow and to learn and to expand there's really the only thing that can come out of it is a deeper level of success and whatever that means to us and whatever areas that we're looking for and a lot of times it's our own our own life and so that's how you know I know you yourself as a mentor it's so important for us to continue to grow and evolve mm -hmm. and to change because if not we kind of just get stagnant even if we are aware and it propels us to that edge, I call it, into that ledge, and so we can even go beyond what we think is possible for ourselves. So no, no matter what area we are, or what level we are, if we have someone that's 10 steps ahead of us pushing us, it continues that growth and continues that learning, so we can continue to reach our new set of potential that we never knew possible. So continue I think it's growing, really yeah. I think it's really important. It's very important, and staying inspired and empowered Heck and yeah. moving forward and not getting stuck, even no matter how much you know. Right, staying not, on track. If you keep giving and you don't give ourselves, then it's kind of like you're giving from a bottom, a cup that's empty at the bottom instead of full. Got it, yeah. And you just get burnt out, and that's a vicious cycle to go down. Well, how do you stay? How do you stay? I know you're very always up, and like if you see pictures of you, you're so cute and energetic and enthusiastic and full of spunk. And how do you stay like that? How do you stay balanced and upbeat? Um, you know, I really think it's a practice of really staying in the moment, um, also of making sure that I'm adding a lot of fun and what I enjoy doing. And for me, it's a lot of music and creative. I'm actually a very creative person, so adding those into my life, as well as just being sponsored. Uh, spontaneous. Mm -hmm. So when something comes up, allowing myself to do that because if we just get so bogged down in the day to day, mm -hmm. we forget to actually live our lives. Totally. What's, actually, what's your favorite practice? Like if you felt kind of bored or maybe not bored, but just kind of stressed or yeah. down one day or just kind of overloaded, too in demand, <laughs> what is your secret? What do you do? Heck yeah, turn the music up as loud as you can and dance like nobody's watching. I am being serious, put your heels on, put your skivvies on, whatever it is, <laughs> put them on and dance around because music is so powerful. Yes. It can just shift us, you know, the vibration that we hear, it can just be the internal shift that's just enough to get us over that hump, over that funk and just keep on moving through our day, which I have to say I do a lot. Yeah. If you get bogged down, we need something to kind of rub us up and to get us over that little lull of the day or just kind of feeling like I'm stuck, I'm like, let me turn some music mm -hmm. on and dance this away. Well, and sometimes you have to push yourself. It's changing your state. So you might be in a, oh, I don't want to, but it's just that like push, like, okay, the music's going to help me. Let's go, you Abs know? Absolutely. And you know, neurologically, when we move, we're moving energy that gets stuck. 
Yes. And it's really important and we create new neural pathways when we put ourselves into new positions mm -hmm. that are unfamiliar. And heck, dancing and being, a, you know, just dancing it all out, yes. what more fun is that to move it out and kind of get things that are being stuck and keeping us stagnant and not playful. Awesome. Moves it on out. Yeah, I love it. Okay, I'm going to try that more often. <laughs> All right, well, let's go in and, and hang out. I'm so happy that you came, and I look forward to going and seeing you speak soon. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Fashion that you've seen here on the show, worn by Kim Summers Egglesey and some of the guests, have been provided by Detour. To find out more information, go to detourstyle.com.